human race in the volume of a sugar cube. The reason for this is that matter, the atoms out of which you are made, are incredibly empty. We probably all have a picture from when we were at school of an atom as a kind of miniature solar system with a nucleus at the centre rather like the sun around which electrons orbit like planets. But this doesn't really give you an idea of how empty atoms are. The playwright Tom Stoppard had this fantastic image. He said if the nucleus at the centre of a hydrogen atom, that's the lightest atom, were like the altar at the heart of St Paul's Cathedral, then an electron would be like a moth in the cathedral, flitting one moment by the dome, the next by the altar. But actually, even this does not tell you how empty atoms are. I can tell you how much empty space there is in, in an atom as a percentage. Okay, it's 99.9999999999999999% Okay, I have to count that off on my fingers. So there's so much empty space in the atoms out of which you are made that if you were to squeeze all that empty space out of them, if you were to squeeze all the empty space out of all the atoms in all the seven billion people on planet Earth, they would indeed fit in the volume of a sugar cube. Of course, it'd be an incredibly heavy sugar cube. But this, is, this isn't just a theoretical possibility. There are objects out in the universe called neutron stars where all the empty space has been removed from their atoms. They're the end point of the evolution of massive stars, stars which explode as supernovae. Paradoxically, when a star explodes as a supernova, its core implodes. Uh, results in what we call a neutron star, something about the size of uh, Mount Everest, but weighing as much as a star. And if you did go to a neutron star and you dug out a chunk the size of a sugar cube, it would indeed weigh as much as the human race. So the question is, why are atoms so empty? You know, why, why are they so big compared to their tiny nucleus at the center? Well, the answer is quantum theory. Quantum theory is our very best description of the microscopic world of atoms and their constituents. And, you know, it, it, it's fantastically useful. It's given us lasers and computers and nuclear reactors. It tells us why the sun shines and why the, the ground beneath our feet is solid. But it also gives us a kind of window on the counterintuitive Alice in Wonderland world just beneath the skin of reality. And it turns out that the basic building blocks of matter, the electrons, atoms, etc., have a strange dual character. They can, be, they can behave both as particles, like localised particles, like tiny billiard balls, and like waves, like ripples on a pond. And it turns out that the biggest quantum waves are associated with the smallest particles. And the smallest commonly occurring particle is the electron. And it's because the electron quantum wave needs tons and tons of elbow room that atoms are so empty. And if there's one thing that encapsulates the madness of quantum theory to me, it's that J.J. Thompson, a British physicist, won the Nobel Prize for showing that the electron was a particle, and his son won the Nobel Prize for showing that it wasn't. Thank you.